Hi, welcome back to Daydream Manor Flower Farm. If you're new here, I'm Dawn. This is my flower farm. Well, not this, this. This is my home office. I live in Zone 8B in South Louisiana. Today, I am in my home office. I tried to be outside. I was in the stem shed and my temperature in there was a nice crisp 97 degrees. And then I thought, well, maybe I'll go sit out under a tree and no, no, no. It was 101 in the shade under a tree and I was like, nope, I'm done. I'm coming inside. Uh, so here I am in my home office and then I'm realizing that, yeah, I still haven't done anything with my seed order. But that's what I want to talk about today is how did I make my seed order? Like we went through how do I, how do I, how I actually place the order. But what I want to talk about is how did I get to that number that I got to. How many seeds did I actually order? And so I just want to share with you, I have my notes here, I just want to share with you um, the method to my madness. So crazy enough, I got an email right before I made this order from the executive director of the farmer's market here in our area. And she wanted to know if I would be interested in being part of their farmer's market. And I just simply said, I don't know. Um, that's a, that is a big commitment. Uh, working full-time at another job um, that actually pays the bills um, is my priority. And so when I, when I start thinking about the farmer's market and my CSA subscriptions, that's a lot because I would have to be harvesting on Thursdays, making bouquets on Fridays, farmer's market on Saturday, delivery for my CSAs on Sunday. Um, plus, I want to do a porch pickup and a bouquet bar. So there's a lot that I want to get done and that I'm doing. And I don't know if, if, if the farmer's market is the right place for me this year. Well, it would be next year. Um, so I thought about that when I placed the order because I did want to be prepared. Because like I've said before, you got to place your order for your seeds to arrive on time when, what, when they're in bloom. So... I, I want to share with you kind of my notes that I took down and then walk you through how I came to some numbers. So first of all, I had to really sit back and think, okay, if I do this farmer's market, what's the reality and what's the time frame? So March, April, May, part of June would probably be good. From the mid of June, well, from today or last week, through the end of August, there's no way I could do a farmer's market. Even though I have flowers that are blooming, they would be wilting as, they, they would probably combust upon taking them out of the car. So I, I don't know if I really want to be out at the farmer's market um, every Saturday, uh, trying to keep flowers cooled, all of those things. I, I don't know if that's the way, the best way that I want to present my product. So I've got to think about that. But what I did was I said, okay, well, let's just say in a perfect world, if I could do March through June um, and do about 17 farmer's markets in that time frame, and my CSA bouquets, how many bouquets would I realistically think I could sell or I could move? What would I need? And so I came up with a number of 400 bouquets over a four month period is pretty, pretty much what I would need. So that is about 60 bouquets a week. That's a lot of bouquets, people. It's a lot of flowers. It's a lot of stems. So then I was like, okay, but what does my, what does my recipe look like? What does my bouquet recipe look like? And so I do have a recipe, um, and, and I'm going to go over that with you. But look, a disclaimer. For my CSA subscription holders, there are a couple of my customers who are repeat people who have signed up I do a little bit more in theirs they were the first ones when I went live with my bouquet subscription they were in when I re when it was time to renew they were in these are people who have supported my farm since day one so I make their bouquets a little special so they have a few more stems in it than the other ones and I'm okay with that because that is my way of thanking them for supporting our farm so with that said, here's my, my, this is how I make my bouquets. Um, I follow a pretty standard um, template. It just depends on what's in season, but I take that into, into consideration. So it's about 20 stems. It's not about, it is 20 stems, about. 
it is 20 stems that I use. So I will use three focal stems, which is my ranunculus, tulips, anemones, um, my sunflowers, my lisianthus, um, and my zinnias. So it just depends on what's in bloom. So we know in March, I could probably squeeze out some tulips. I mean, I told y'all before, I'm not going deep into tulips as much as I'd like to. The heat just gets them here fast. They And if you don't take some precautions, they very short stems. So I, they have those. My ranunculus, I can get um, for sure for March and parts of April. And then as soon as that heat hits, which is as soon as it hits above 80, they out of here. So... I know I can, I know I have those. Um, I do three spikes, which is my snaps, my larkspur, bee balm, my celosia, my delphinium. I mean, you know, I planted it. It just never showed up. So maybe. Um, four disc flowers. So that's my calendula, my sweet william, um, my straw flowers when they decide to come to the party, my cosmos, and my marigolds. My marigolds are just popping here. Um, I do six fillers. My fillers are mint. So I've said this before, mint will take over the world if you let it. So it is one of the things that I love to use. And I will tell you, I'm doing some spearmint in my bouquets and that green is so vibrant and it just pops in those bouquets. Um, but I did order some mountain mint. And I feel like there was maybe an apple mint in there. Maybe I got, I, I can't remember. I, I, at least it was on my list. I don't think I got it from um, this seed order. I think it was from somewhere else. Um, and then, ba of course, basil, my cinnamon and lemon. That's kind of a standby. But then, this year I grew honeywort. And I am obsessed. That I have decided to call the signature filler of Daydream Manor. Um, it looked spectacular in my bouquet. So I will be growing much, much more of that. Um, and then four airs. And airs are those pieces that kind of come out and kind of give that bouquet a bigger look. Um, a lot of people use ornamental grasses and that I've not had any success with. Um, in fact, my silver tip wheat that I grew, <laughs> I think I had 10 of them that actually grew. They're upstairs in my attic drying right now. Um, a lot of people use cress. I planted cress. It never showed up. So, eh, I may, may or may not try again. But I'm going to use my gumfrina pin cushion, star flower, um, and forget me nots. So I, I've never, I've never even grown forget me nots. I have packets of seeds. I have not done them yet. So we'll see. Um, so that is my 20 stems. So three focals, three spikes, four discs, six filler, and four airs. So when I go into the field, um, to harvest, that's what I'm looking for. And I usually have a cheat sheet, and I'll talk to you about that in a second. Um, so let me start with my math. And when, when in my, in my, in my real life role, <laughs> because this is my retirement role, that's kind of how I, I keep thinking about it. But in my role, I've talked about um, STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math, um, and how important that is to the industry that I'm in. And I always would joke around that the M in math, I, the M in STEM, that is just not me. I'm not good at it, but I had to figure it out, just to figure out how many seeds I needed. So, let me start with the focal. So I said I needed three focals, right? And I'm going to do 60 bouquets. So I'm going to take that 60 bouquets and multi multiply it times three, which is 180. Then I'm going to bump that up to 200 because i got to think about breakage, um, damage, any of those things that I may need a couple more stems for. So that's going to bring me to 200 stems. So I need 200 sunflowers, 200 zinnias. Um, 200 ranunculus. I need 200 of those, each one of those types. Spikes, I said I needed the same thing, three of those. So that's 60 times three stems is 180. I'm going to bump that up to 200. My disc, need four. 60 times four is 240. I'm going to bump that to 200. Just because I like working with round numbers. And because seed packets usually, when I, where I order from, is 100 to 200 in a pack. So that just makes it easier when I start thinking in that and those qualities. Uh-uh. Quantities. Sorry. Um, my fillers, 60 times 6 is 360. And I'm going to bump that up to 400. Then my airs, 60 bouquets times 4 stems is the 140. And I'm going to bump that up to 200. That gives me some base numbers that I know I've got to get. So that's about 1,200 seeds right there. But then I also need to go and look at 
what I'm planting. So like my sunflowers, they are one and done. I know once I cut it, it's not coming back. So I know I have to up that number on sunflower seeds because right now I plan out a tray um, every other week. That's just my routine. I plan it every other week. Um, or I start one every other week. Um, I have to, when I also look through here, so I look at like my zinnias, I know I can get about five good flowers off of it. Sometimes a little bit more just depends, um, but the humidity gets to them. And so then they start getting funky with that fungus and everything. So they've got to go. Um, my snaps, I can usually get a double bloom with the heat with those. Um, my celosia is just a workhorse. My, my marigolds are workhorses. Um, my calendula, once my calendula, once the heat comes, they're out of here. I can get a couple of a couple of cuts off of one plant. Um, my gumfrina, Lord have mercy, that looks like I haven't even touched it, and I have been like cutting like crazy on it. So that has so many stems that is just that just multiplies like crazy so i will look at those and that's also going to help me with understanding when i need to succession succession plant and how many times um to get to some of these numbers so i'll go back through and i went back through and i looked at that and was like okay i know i'm gonna i need to succession plant my zinnias at least twice this year in general because that's just how they that, that's just how it had that has been the history of them here let me say it that way um my honeywort i'm going to do a second succession of it it did start it kind of it did not come back after i cut it and i didn't even look to see if it was a come and cut again i have to cut and come again i don't even know um but i'm going to double down on it so that is kind of how i work through but i also know that i need more seeds because i have several other things happening Last year, I was successful in um, drying celosia, gumfrina, basil, some baby's breath. Um, I did some mums. Right now in the attic, I have um, some Dusty Miller drying uh, along with some Rebecca. So I'm trying some different things up there right now that I'm drying. So I want to make sure I have enough seeds in order to plant to dry as well because that's going to um, help with some workshops I want to do in the fall. Um, I need to have some extra flowers on hand. I need to have those seeds for those other flowers for those special bouquets that I get that people ask me for for birthdays. I also have graduation in there, Mother's Day, which is big. So I need to make sure that I have enough flowers for those. Um, I need, I've had several um, event planners reach out to me wanting to know how they can buy from me. So I want to make sure I have enough to have some buckets of certain flowers. Um, I do have some dahlias growing. They're still an iffy thing for me. Um, so I, I, I don't know about those yet. Um, and then I've had a couple of young ladies reach out to me who um, want to do be a DIY bride. And so, um, you know, that's just... I would have a bucket they'd come pick so i need to make sure i keep up with that variety and some colors in that space so that's the other thing was also deciding colors um the palettes that i want it to go with so if um like for instance my um, bouquets that just went out for csa's were heavy in oranges and yellows because my glads were um were blooming and um, when my lilies i had a bunch of yellow lilies so those are also focal flowers i didn't include them in there because they um i'm still working on the timing so those would act, would be part of my focals um so a lot of that is just how i went through and made that order um based on how many bouquets i thought i could do, I, I would realistically sell plus my csa's um that was just a bare minimum and then i added to to have all of these other pieces um i you know the other thing i had to take in consideration is do i have enough craft paper when i wrap it do i have enough stickers do i have enough and i do have all of those pieces i have i have enough harvest buckets i have all of that stuff um, and so, uh, what I was going to say earlier was when I go out, I, when I, when I go out to do my harvesting for my CSA bouquets, you know, I have a cheat sheet. So if I need 30 sunflowers, I have on the paper, 30 sunflowers, um, I do harvest in, bu in, in bunches of 10. It's just easier for me to remember. So if I need 30 sunflowers, I'm going to go, I'm going to, I'm going to cut 10. I strip them in the bucket, grab another 10 in the bucket, another 10 in the bucket 
bucket then I know I have 30 and I move on I do keep I do try to keep my bucket separate so I have one for sunflowers one for this one for that um, doesn't always work out that way because by the time I probably get halfway through I'm just like oh my god am I ever gonna finish so that's just a little tidbit that I use that helps keep me on track it's just easy for me to um, to do that in multiples of 10 uh, sometimes I even have before I had as many buckets of I I would rubber band them and stick them in the bucket so they would stay together and wouldn't take up too much space so I have those pieces um, that I've that I've kind of perfected I don't want to say no let me not say perfected because I can I will change if there is a better way um, but so this is this is how I do it. it that is kind of the method behind um, how I order my seeds um, how I'm projecting and worst case scenario I decide I'm not doing the um, flower for uh, flower markets and I have those seeds and then I'm just gonna pick because I we have talked about you know turning this into a you pick as well so that would just be seeds that would go to that use so I'm never worried about wasted seed I think sunflower Steve said if you're not composting flowers you're not growing enough so that's what I need to do. I need to be able to compost flowers, evidently. Um, if you have a method and you would like to share, please let me know because I am always looking for ways to improve what I'm doing. Um, I hope you learned something or took something away from this video. Uh, if you did, let me know. So, I guess this is it. And until next time, my friends, I hope you're turning all your daydreams into a reality.